morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Benny Neglur, uh, a diabetologist and metabolic physician from India. And I'm really honored and privileged to have with me uh, Dr. Stefano Del Prato. He's the president of the European Association of the Study of Diabetes. And he's the chair of this uh, 58 scientific uh, sessions that we are having today at, in a very beautiful city of Stockholm in Sweden. So let us begin by the first Claude, uh, Claude Bernard lecture, sir. Uh, so we, uh, Dr. Professor uh, uh, Michael Nock, took us on a very nice journey from the start of the incretin therapies and how they evolved over the years. And uh, we have now GLP RAs, which are incretin based therapies, uh, having a profound action on atherosclerosis, complicating type 2 diabetes. Uh, but having said that, what would be your thoughts on the efficacy of these GLPRAs on and the HPA1C redu reduction? Have they also progressed as well over the years? Uh, yeah, of course. You know, the the, the incretin concept is a fantastic uh, concept, and actually, and Professor Nauk yesterday gave a fantastic lecture, taking us from uh, what I think uh, is the best way to understand the treatment identifying a pathophysiology, identifying the pathophysiological defect, and then identifying the treatment related to that. And the incretin concept is a typical example. But it's also an example that has uh, provided us with a number of unexpected uh, surprises. It's a very um, important effect in terms of the glycemic control, and it has been evolving with uh, the most recent uh, long-acting GLP-1 receptor agonist providing in average between 1 point and 1.5 percent A1C reduction. Uh, and this is associated also with uh, no effect in terms of the risk of hypoglycemia, which is something very important, even more with a significant reduction in body weight. All the GLP-1 receptor agonists are by and large associated with the uh, weight reduction, but the most recent ones, and in particular semaglutide, has been uh, probably associated with the largest reduction in body weight. Now, if you improve glycemic control and you reduce the body weight, and also with this drug, can also improve and reduce blood pressure, you can also expect an antisclerotic effect, an antiheterogenic effect. And in fact, all the GLP-1 receptor agonists has been shown to be associated with a significant beneficial effect in terms of reduction of the major cardiovascular uh, adverse events, which is uh, uh, non-fatal myocardial infarction, non-fatal stroke, and cardiovascular mortality. The GLP-1 receptor agonists have a profound effect on glycemic control, have then a profound effect in terms of uh, providing beneficial effect on cardiovascular risk, but also they may play a role in preventing or reducing some of the progression of uh, the renal disease in, in diabetes, although this seems to be mainly associated with a reduction in albuminuria. So I think that we have new opportunities for treatment, and these opportunities have not come to the end. Because Professor Nauke yesterday yeah. also finished his lecture going, uh, go, uh, going beyond what is the GLP-1 receptor agonist. Because GLP-1 is just one of the incretin hormone families. There are other hormones there, the GIP for instance. And now we have dual receptor. And actually there is not just the code administration of GLP-1 or GIP but actually the development of a molecule that could interact with the GLP-1 receptor agonist as well as, as well as with the GIP receptor. The first one has been just released, is tizepatide, and tizepatide seems to be even more effective in terms of glycemic control, body weight reduction, although we still await for the cardiovascular benefit that this drug could provide us with. Right, so just an extension to that question. Now the newer GLPRAs, and we have an oral form, semaglutide, and the use of GLPRAs have, I think, gone multifold in most of the countries, even in India, which I think have less resources. And the beauty of this drug is uh, achieving weight loss, which is actually complementing the effect of the atherosclerotic burden reduction in patients of type 2 diabetes. We are now talking of reversal of diabetes with this drug. And uh, what do you feel? I mean, we are going from a glucocentric to cardiorenal centric. And now are we moving towards uh, adiposopathy uh, centric uh, effect as well and would it change the guidelines? 
can I propose to you that we are becoming diabetic centric? <laughs> because, you know, diabetes, in particular type 2 diabetes, is true that we made a diagnosis on the basis of glycemic levels and glycemic control, but also we are very well aware that type Ooh. 2 diabetes is syndromic in nature. It is often associated with central adiposity in particular. Uh, this is very prominent in your country, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. It's often associated with hypertension. It's often associated with uh, dyslipidemia. Uh, and all these are atherogenic uh, condition. So if we have treatment that allow us to be more comprehensive in our approach to, the, to type 2 diabetes, you can expect this uh, to translate into a greater benefit. And this concept of a uh, holistic approach that is, you know, of course, providing good glycemic control, but also earlier on to try to reduce as much as possible body weight, to reduce blood pressure, to improve the lipid profile, this can be also associated with a, with a completely revolutionary approach of the disease. And uh, we have new opportunities nowadays. Uh, you mentioned the GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now GLP-1 receptor agonists, as you mentioned, are also associated, uh, uh, can be provided uh, by uh, oral in ingestion. We have new molecules coming up, and all these are characterized by profound effect on the body weight. Are these going to change our guideline suggestion? Now, on Friday, uh, there will be the uh, official presentation of the latest uh, consensus from the ADA and the SD. And the, the, the dogma there is be comprehensive, it's a holistic approach. Try to really provide as soon as possible all the potential effects that you can have an impact on the risk of these individuals, including a deposit, of course. Right. Thank you very much for that uh, answer. And now we'll move on to technology, sir. You, we know that l in the last two years we have to we are doing uh, all the conferences on a virtual platform, and this time you have combined the two. And your idea, I heard it in your presidential address, that it will help us to reach out to various areas of the globe which is not accessible. Uh, primarily to attend these conferences. And uh, they can hear it in their own homes. And technology is now the in thing as to how we work and how to live today. I remember when I first came for the ESD conference, I used to take the scientific program, the book, and I used to take it home to India. And I still have one or two with me. And now you just have it on the mobile phone. So how will technology change diabetes care in the future? You know, technology is going to change uh, many aspects of our life and also obviously, hopefully also the many aspects of the life of the people with the diabetes. One thing about, you know, the booklet that you are saying, the, the, uh, the program book, you know, one of the commitment we have with ESD is to become sustainable, eco-sustainable, to become green. So True. the less paper we print, uh, the less, you know, uh, trees we are going to, to use to, to make papers, I think that, you know, it's a small step, but it is a step that can count. And uh, uh, this is how technology can also help. It can help to preserve the, 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 uh, the environment, and I think this is important. But technology is becoming very important for diabetes. Think about, you know, glucose monitoring continuous glucose monitoring. Think how the continuous glucose monitoring is changing our way to uh, to evaluate glucose control in people with diabetes. That till nowadays it was mainly based on glycated hemoglobin, HPA1C. Now we have more metrics. We have time in range that can be derived from this uh, continuous glucose monitoring. Is time below range? Is fluctuation and stability of the glycemic control that we couldn't appreciate just using the glycated hemoglobin? But it's even more. Think about type 1 diabetes, the bionic artificial pancreas. Think about how technology is helping to uh, look forward for cell therapies that can be obtained thanks to very advanced technology. And think about technology as an integrated system to really bring together all the digital data, digitalization of, uh, of medicine. And this, if you think, and if we'll be able to, to, to come up with a strong system, is going to help a lot of people because you can monitor the people without having these people to move around too much. And if they move around, they are going to use that car. And because of that, we go back to the start, where there will be more green and more 
uh, 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 respectful to the uh, to the Thank ambient you. and to the world and to the nature. Right, sir. So thank you so much. Uh, we've I've really, I think you have given a lot of uh, information to all of us and me in particular. And sir, what would be a last question is, what would be your message from this conference to all the healthcare practitioners in the world? Uh, let me be optimistic. We're going to defeat diabetes. <laughs> well said, sir. Thank you so much for this interview.